Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Richard the Dick Coughlin and this is the second part, and I'm pleased to say final part of my video, for, to my, the second part to my video I did a few days ago called How Can You Be This Stupid and Only Have One Head where I am reading out the writings, the insane, unprecedented levels of herpyderpia previously unknown to science by Marmite Man 4 real name Sean Allen who used to be on YouTube he's a f extreme nationalist BMP supporter and now he's decided to put his rather than it subject us to his face and voice we now have his words written down. And I am telling you this now, this video comes with a disclaimer. If you thought the first video, you know, was fucking crazy, if you thought some of the stuff in the first one was bad, it ain't shit. That was just a whore's duvet compared to the full-on fucking medieval banquet of fucking tinfoil hattery. This, this blog, I'm not joking, Glenn Beck could read this and he'd sit back and go, this guy's a fucking idiot. Right? I take no responsibility for damages caused to you, anybody near you. I will not replace any fucking items in your house that you break. No, and I'm so glad I started smoking again, because if I hadn't, I'd have started after reading this. So let's crack on, because there's a lot to get through. His first blog in this section is about the Paralympics. He has a picture of the opening ceremony of the Paralympics. Behold, the monstrosity which is the Paralympics. If you thought the Olympics were bad, with their pro-racial mixing, pro-multiculturalism, and homo-erotic opening ceremony, then you should have seen the Paralympic opening ceremony. It was like cult cultural Marxism on steroids. Sean. I, you're not the only person, there was a prominent Tory MP who complained about how multicultural the opening ceremony of the Olympics was. And I find it hilarious that even the Olympic ceremony, which by the way is a, a sporting event which features every country in the world, is going to be criticised for, of course it's going to be fucking multicultural. It features a multitude of cultures, more than you would get in any other fucking event. Pro-racial mixing, I'm sorry, I didn't must have... And what's the homoerotic part? Did they replace the 800 metres four-man fucking relay with fucking dildos? Did they have to wank the other guy off before they fucking took it? And it's the Paralympics, Sean. All the people in the Paralympics are disabled. And you're a Hitler-loving fucking Nazi. The only way it would have fucking been acceptable for you is if they'd got all of the fucking participants in the in the stadium where there would suddenly be no one in the fucking stands, no one watching. They'd be, what's going on? Suddenly the roof comes over the fucking stadium, locks them all in there, and they just turn on the massive cy you know, Cyclone B canisters and watch them all perish. Which, you know, I will admit, would be fucking interesting. It would spark a debate, but you know, it's not really going to be conducive to a good Paralympics. You know, you know, and surely you can qualify for it, Sean. You know, surely. I mean, just send send the Paralympic people this. Can you run fast? I'm sure you could get in there. And there was a picture. There's a thing. There was a statue or a a, a display of like a mass, massive statue of like someone with no, no you know disfigured body, no arms and legs, someone who was disabled, right? What is this picture anyway? Looks like some sort of Aryan man who has no legs, no arms, and a disfigured upper body while Africans dance around it in some sort of weird celebration. Yeah, I mean, they should have really, at the Paralympics, they should have had, like, you know, some, they should have had someone dancing, saying, I've got legs, I've got legs, I'm not a cripple, I'm not a cripple, you know, running over to the Down syndromes going, we've got one less chromosome than you, ooh, ooh, you fucking retards, boom. You know, what do you want, Sean? Anyway, this is the picture of the week. Tell me what you think. I think you're an idiot, right? Next blog, the RNC. This is Sean's uh, review of the Republican National Convention. Well, I decided to stay up late last night. Oh, you naughty boy. 
and catch the Republican National Convention. And m the, the moment we've all been waiting for, Mitt Romney's acceptance speech. Well, as he's such a handsome man, as you put it, Sean, I bet you were waiting for it. This was like babe station to you, did you? I bet you fucking kitchen made sure your parents were asleep, you locked the door, you filthy young ferret. Right, firstly, I would like to say the most interesting thing about the whole convention is that the Democrats have been picking the smallest things to make make it look like a complete farce. Yeah, like when that guy, Aitken guy, what did he say? He said that, you know, we can't get pregnant from rape. I mean, you know, talk about fucking splitting hairs here. And then the fact he was backed up, you know, by, you know, he was backed up when another guy came out and said that rape is a legitimate form of contraception. Um, you know, and who is that guy? Paul Ryan? And he's only the vice president nominee. I would say the Democrats are now in panic mode. I've learned this from Sean's blog. Whatever he says, the exact opposite is the case. So Republicans are now in panic mode, which we know to be the truth. He then goes on to some of the speeches. Clint Eastwood's speech. Yes, Clint Eastwood, the famous Republican actor who we've all seen. That's the end of the sentence, right? You meant to say we've all seen in films such as Every Which Way But Loose. And, you know, that one where he plays that old racist, that basically Marmite Man, the future. But then Marmite Man posts one of the sh most shocking things he's possibly ever written. He says this. His speech, which I'll post below, was pretty embarrassing, if I'm going to be honest. Thank God. It showed... Sean, you've just proven there is a, there is a minuscule, nano billionth of a percent of fucking common sense in your head somewhere. Mitt Romney's speech, I'll skip forward to it. The first words which came to my mind after watching his speech were passionate, strong, aggressive, sexy, he didn't say that, eager, patriotic and naive. When Marmite Man 4 calls you naive, you're in shit. I think his speech was aimed at those Americans who know that a Marxist fraudster and his gang have taken over and are doing everything possible to destroy a weakened America. Sean, this might surprise you, and this is something that people on the left do as well. It's this idea that politicians in power set out to actually deliberately destroy the fucking country they're in charge of. Believe it or not, it actually is to their benefit that they, they are successful, you know. It's like Alex Jones does that thing about how the, the NWO, we all know the NWO are trying to, they want to kill 80% of the population. No, they don't. That destroys any likelihood of them selling anything. Right? You know, I think the anti-whites will be seething at the mouth as opposed to where, where else are you going to seethe, sort of, You're going to seethe for, for your kneecaps, right? At the mouth that a white man is challenging their almighty leader Obama. Yes, because Bill Clinton was egged off stage at the DNC, wasn't he? <coughs> I can't wait to see the egg on Mr. Obama's face if he loses. The fallout from his failure will be so immense, who knows what will happen. Well, if Mitt Romney does win, I can tell you this. I will have at least four years of um, easy material to write for my stand-up show. Black people certainly won't take it easy, if you know what I mean. Sean... Black people in America have a very long history of voting Democrat in the overwhelming majority, whether the, whether the geezer's black or not, right? right. Next blog, Gold, The Rise of Golden Dawn. I did a video about Golden Dawn on this channel a little while ago. Uh, you can go check it out. Uh, I recall sometime around June this year, certain left-wingers saying the Golden Dawn had their moment and they would simply fade away quite, quietly into the night. How wrong they were. Of course, Sean doesn't say who these left-wingers were. I very much doubt that they exist, right? It's just him making stuff up. Clearly, the left-wingers are scared of Golden Dawn. Yeah, fucking wankers. Well, what? Yeah, Sean, believe it or not, people on the left-wing would be concerned about Nazis coming into power in, in, to any degree, right? They've even compared Golden Dawn to the NSDAP of the 1930s. He then links to the article I actually read out in my video about Golden Dawn. Sean, the reason they're being compared to the NSDAP is because they're doing the exact same shit the NSDAP used to do. Sean then says this is ironic because their beautiful socialist friends at the Syriza look like Stalin's old boys. Now, the Syriza are the uh, basically the radical left-wing party in, uh, in um, Greece. And it basically, they are, they are, you know, the radical left wing. That's not socialism, Sean. I know you don't, don't fight, don't know that, right? But it's not socialism, right? Um, it's beautiful, you know, socialist. No, Sean, right? Here's the difference, right? The people in the radical left uh, party in uh, Greece aren't going around killing people. His next video. Feminism is a mental disorder. Now, I know there's going to be a, probably a, quite a few people or, you know, watching my videos who don't like feminism 
right? And I, I, I know that, right? And might even be some of the MRA community. But this guy, uh, Sean, is about to take it to a level that I hope even you, uh, you guys, will f find ridiculous. As some of you may know, I'm not a big fan of feminism. And my encounters, encounters, Sean, with feminists usually end up with me being called a bigot. Isn't that true of 99% of all the conversations you've ever had with anyone in the world ever? Including animals, right? Which is pretty hilarious, since these feminist nutjobs have a deep-seated hatred for males. Actually, you know, they don't all hate, hate men, Sean. I've known quite a lot of feminists, and, you know, you know, who like me, who I got on with, you know. Some of them even let me fuck them, you know. Something you might get to do one day, you know, if you ever meet any blind, deaf masochists. Today, I came across a video which made me nearly tear my hair out. You haven't got any fucking hair. Now, he links to a video. It was basically this woman shouting at a guy and um, calling him this, this She was clearly insane. This, this, she was mental. And he was shouting at her. And then when she realized there was a camera filming her, she started you know, acting as if accusing him of raping her and all that. This woman was mental, right? Nobody would have believed this fucking story, right? Um, and he says here, well, what do you think? Did you have the urge to punch your screen like I did? I thought so. This isn't, ju this isn't just one case of a batshit crazy woman accusing a man of rape as a we weapon. This is a growing trend of feminist militancy. Sean, that woman was not a feminist. She was a mental case. Now, I know you don't get the difference here, as your title of your blog clearly says, but there's no, that woman's just mental, right? Also, weren't you having a go at, at lefties for trying to equate Anders Breivik with all nationalists? And you've gone and found a mental batshit fucking woman on the internet who's behaving like a fucking cunt, and you're saying this is feminism. Right. Feminism, feminists have manipulated Western women to act this way when they don't get what they want. Right? Who manipulated the feminists into acting that way, Sean? Because you're saying that Western women... Well, the feminists are Western women. So who, are the, who manipulated them? Just curious. The theory, I believe, is that if a man does not adhere to your wishes, you must use blackmail and your feminine innocence to mentally castrate a man. Now, let me get this clear, right? Any woman who is found to have accused guilty of accusing a man of rape wrongfully uh, deserves to be sent to prison for the same amount of time as a man who is guilty of rape. Because they do, they do more damage uh, to the credibility of the, a genuine rape victim's fucking case. But, Sean, don't act like this is happening all the time. Right? And don't act like this is something that is an adherent of feminist doctrine. It's not, right? Radical feminism, uh, the likes like you get on here uh, sometimes, like the Nuclear Knights and the Diana Bostons and those fucking... Yeah, but no, fuck them. Who cares what they think? They're mental cases. This is how Marxists believe women should act. It's Yeah, I believe all women should go around accusing men needlessly of rape. It would be such... I would benefit from that so much, wouldn't I? You wouldn't have seen this behavior, this is great, you wouldn't have seen this behavior in, in the 1950s, back when women had a traditional roles at home. Yeah, when you could fucking bitch slap your missus when you got home from work, just for the hell of it, and she wouldn't fucking mouth off anything. Feminism has been in the news a lot lately. I'm sure you've heard of the name Pussy Riot before. Yes, I have. Yes, the punk feminist band has been in a lot of trouble recently in Russia, raiding orthodox churches, acting like degenerates in public by not wearing any clothes. Sean, you are possibly the only 18-year-old boy I have ever encountered who is complaining about a bunch of, uh, of young women taking their clothes off in public. And even cutting down crosses, which the mainstream media chooses to ignore. He then links to Russia Today, of course, forgetting that Russia Today is mainstream media in Russia. Um... Cutting down a cross. Oh no, Sean, aren't you the. Uh, didn't you sit. It, didn't you make videos laughing at fucking Muslims who were getting. Offend, who get offended at shit like this? You know, uh, when, they, when people, someone draws Mohammed and they get offended. I'm not talking about the fucking Muslims who murder people, just the people who get butt hurt about it. And here you are complaining that a bunch of girls have cut a cross down. <laughs> the Pussy Riot Chainsaw to a Cross video has been around for a few weeks. If you haven't seen it, you'll probably understand why it's title. why well, I titled this blog. Feminism is a mental disorder. Right. Yes, Sean, I do, because you're an idiot, that's why. Now, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the big one coming up now. Please get yourself into a safe area, 
lock the door, you know, make sure you've got nothing around you that's breakable, relax, try and maybe have a, you know, something to, to calm your nerves, because <coughs> we're about to go, we, this is dangerous territory, right? In my years of being on YouTube, this, what I'm about to read to you is up there, possibly in the top 10 of the craziest shit I've heard, you know, there, there's honestly... Are paedophile rights next? In a postmodernist world run by, by progressives, we must ask ourselves, when does the ball stop? What ball? Right. How far will progressives go to achieve their dream of an equal utopia? <sighs> when I heard paedophiles are calling for the same rights as homosexuals, I wasn't surprised. Right. First of all, Sean. Um, paedophile rights groups have existed for a very long time. Uh, in, in America, there's the group NAMBLA. Uh, there are groups, there's even a political organisation in, in Holland, I think it is. And um, let's get this straight. Paedophiles have the same rights as any other human being, Sean. In the sense that they have the right to, you know, um, not be you know, arrested to a fair trial. They have the right to remain silent. They have the right to, you know, um, vote. They have the right to, you know, all these things that you have that, you know, human right to, it applies to all of them, right? It's talking about the same rights as homosexuals. Now, Sean would have you believe that homosexuals have more rights than straight people. So, I don't get it. But he's, he links to an article in the North Colorado Gazette about an organisation called Before You Act, who are another one of these... Um, you know, pedo rights groups trying to sort of, you know, uh, you know, I don't fucking know. It's fucking ridiculous, right? The level of degeneracy will continue to rise as we're told we're living in the past and we have to evolve. You don't believe in evolution, Sean. These progressive lunatics, I love the fact he calls progressive lunatics when his blog is called Revolution and Progress. Right? These progressive lunatics have effectively taken over the media and the education system. They're forcing children to accept the reality of homosexuality and transgender rights. Yes, every Tuesday afternoon at 2pm, double homo rights, we had, you know. How long until they're forcing children to let adults abuse them? <sighs> Probably quite a while, Sean. I imagine, you know, can't see that one catching on, right, you know? You know, I've had, uh, you know, most of the girls, I've never been out with an underage a girl or a child, right? But um, even even that, you know, I've had a very difficult time getting my girlfriend's parents to accept me because I'm a bit of a fucking loony. Uh, I can't imagine, you know, uh, you know, little you know, little Jimmy coming home, seven years old, with his new best friend, you know, Keith, who he met at the bus stop and has corduroy trousers with stains down the front of them, right? Progressives constantly take credit for the abolition of slavery, the first step to an equal and fair world. Take a deep breath now. Hold it in. You ready? What these progressives don't tell you is that white Europeans didn't want to own slaves. It was Semites, such as Jews and Arabs, who owned slaves and sold them off cheaply to North America. And white people didn't want to buy them, but... You can't say no to a bargain, can you? Well, we've all been there, haven't we? You go past the Jan in the January sales, you think, well, I don't want it, but it's cheap, right? They didn't, white people didn't want to own slaves, but they just had to buy them? Hold on, clinch your buttocks now. It's about to get even worse. Ready? Ready for the next bit? I don't agree with slavery. Good for you, Sean. Well done. I think everyone would be better off today if the African slaves were, ne were never taken to North America. So you don't disagree with slavery because it's wrong for one human being to own another human being that way. No, you disagree with slavery because they were all black. You know, and you didn't like the fact they were taken to North America. Oh, bless it. Well, if those fucking... How did those evil Jews convince the fucking... Naive, good-hearted white folk of, Amer of, of America to buy them. Tense up, folks, now. Big one. This is going to be another. Clinch up. Slavery ended because the British Empire wanted it to end. And the British Empire were certainly no progressives. Moral men and women ended slavery because they didn't want it in the first place. Fact. 
Yeah, the Civil War was just for a giggle, wasn't it? I mean, the British Empire said, like, look, everyone, stop slavery now. America, like, yes, we know you're independent, right? Okay, have a fucking war. If you must. You... Okay, dirt level returns to normal for a bit. Just to relax. Next up for progressives was segregation, which I do support. There's nothing wrong with races having their own areas and their own communities. Let them live in peace. Okay. Right. But here's the thing, Sean. You say that you're... Yeah, but no can do for progressives since they had to end this evil and force races to mix. No one's forcing you. Sean, you are free to come and go where you please, right? Why don't you get together with some of your fucking white friends and just say, we're going to get alone, our own little tower block and only there. You know, no one's forcing you, Sean, to live anywhere, right? What about people like me, Sean? In your fucking... In your world, I would be forced to not live with people of different uh, races or colours or creeds or cultures. And I want to. I like living in, in a diverse area. I like... Being, a, being in a community of different people. Why should I be forced to, to not, you know? Segregation didn't even end. So why are you complaining? Still today, racists choose to live amongst others uh, over in homogenous urban areas and towns. Whites in suburban tech zones in Texas and Arizona, blacks... In yeah, and you're always moaning about it! It's just human nature, Sean. Communities crop up like that. Gay people tend to congregate in stronger... Jews... You know, uh, black people, you know, Indians, Polish people, it happens. You know, look at fucking South Africa, right? They're all, that's where white people live. Of course, they, they couldn't just stop outlawing segregation. <laughs> Bastards. Right? They had to promote racial mixing with and multiculturalism. Sean, I'm sorry to tell you this, right? But no one is forcing any white person to fuck black people or any non-white person, right? right? The, the reason you can't get laid, Sean is not because all of the white women have been convinced they've got to fuck a darkie, right? The reason you can't get laid is because you're an unappealing person. You, you haven't got much to offer another per human being in terms of, like, some sort of, you know, meaningful relationship, right? Racial mixing is something that I love. I love, you know, fucking ebony, caramel, big booty bitches. I love bubble butts. On my on my honeys, right? I love I, I you know I once used to, I used to go out with a fucking a half black Jew, half Jew, right? I, I love I love women who have got all different colours and shapes and sizes, right? That's just me, right? I I, I you know people say I've got no standards when it comes to uh, women, but I just like to think that I see the beauty in everyone, right? Right. They had to promote multiculturalism, so one day the entire human race is one colour and shares one culture. And Sean, that would be awful, wouldn't it? Because you would have no one to hate. Wow, what a boring world. No gingers. That's the first group he lists. No gingers, no blondes, no Slavics, no Germanics, no Anglos, no East Angers, no Arabs or Persians. Just one big gloop of human. Probably some brown coloured thing, and they call this diversity? Sean, I have been, I'm 33 years old, and I have enough faith in the human race that even if that were true, even if every human being looked the same, sounded the same, and believed and acted exactly the same, we would find a reason to fucking hate somebody for something. We could hate them because you're standing over there. We'll start having organised... People like you would come up and start having, you know, hating people who decided to stand within five feet of your fucking personal space. Right? We... That's what we do, humans. We, just against all odds, we, you know, for, we, no matter how unnecessary it is, we can always find an excuse to hate. Right, now, everyone, take a drink, a Valium, have some Vicodin, strap yourself down, Right? Stick a sock in your mouth. Do whatever you've got to do. Try and maintain your composure. I am about to read the single fucking stupidest thing that has ever been written down, ever, in the history of mankind. What you've just heard 
Nothing compared. This is that is a fucking that the, what I've just read to you is plankton on the fucking re retard food chain. Are you ready? Now, away from the race issues, we return to the one of more devious creations of progressives. Homosexuality. The homosexual philosophy they claim has been around for thousands of years, and it exists in animals too, apparently. But what we do know is that it has only been since around the 1960s, and that we've had it shoved down our throats. Let me just say that again. What we do know is that homosexuality has only been around since the 1960s. <sighs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I just need to. I just need to. I will be. Jesus fucking Christ! You're kidding me. How can you be so fucking stupid? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my! You are. You stupid fucking idiot! You mad fucking insane! What the hell is wrong? Ah! 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 Excuse me, I just had a bit of an episode. I've got the camera upside down as well. No, I haven't. It's up that road. I've got screens all covered in shit now. Homosexuality didn't exist until the 1960s. Sean! Hitler wrote about homosexuals in Mein Kampf, a book you reviewed and that was written in the 19 fucking 20s. Can homosexuals procreate each other? I thought not. Guess what? That makes it unnatural. You will never procreate, Sean. They might legalise bestiality and heck necrophilia too. And you know what? If they legalise necrophilia, I hope you, you, I hope when you die, the biggest, gayest, fucking blackest necrophile with the biggest dick find, digs your body up and fucking violates the shit out of you. So you've got an ass like a fucking clown's pocket. Can we end this madness? No, Sean. I think I'm living proof that all you can do is exacerbate it. His final blog says that he is currently moving house and won't have the internet for six weeks. Thank you, God. Never give it back to him. Never say anything. Don't think, don't move. Ever. Mercifully, this is over. This dried up, shit encrusted, ant infested, smelly old, three month fucking condom of a human being that you'd find at the bottom of a fucking abortion clinic's wheelie bin has driven me to a po I no, I'm never doing this again. No more. No more reading this cunt shit. You can do it. I've sacrificed enough. Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. Good night. May God be less. <laughs>